everybody. Welcome to week six and welcome to our second creativity cluster project. So last week you guys worked on your own um, to take some existing material and rethink it. Mix it, mash it, make it new, make it your own. This process resonates, I think, with a lot of what we've been reading about and hearing about. That creativity relies often on drawing on existing resources, nodding to those who have come before us and thinking in new ways about tools, approaches, and ideas that already exist and are circulating in the world. I posted your Project 5 work in the Week 6 folder. I'd encourage you all to spend some time looking at each other's work and to see the huge range of ways in which you each took a small folder of music clips a small folder of video clips, and a couple of images and illustrated creativity. This week, we're going to focus specifically on spaces that foster creativity and innovation. Unfortunately, in college, uh, you experience a lot of spaces that are not particularly well designed for either of those things. A lot of our classrooms have desks, locked in rows, putty-colored walls, horrible lighting, and an inherent focus on the professor, who, based on this instructional and room design, should always be at the front of the class lecturing at students. Quite a few of our classrooms look almost no different than classrooms looked a hundred years ago, although admittedly uh, most classrooms today include some instructional technology, like a computer the professor can present from, and in some, the chairs are plastic instead of wood. And, thankfully, you can't smoke in classrooms anymore. Our computer labs follow this design model, computers in rows, the focus on the front of the room, and little room to move around or collaborate. Human beings react to the spaces that they're in. Space matters, um, whether or not we're that conscious of it. And it matters pretty profoundly in terms of what happens in that space and what sort of activities are invited or fostered. So this week, um, we're going to read a pretty thick chunk from a book called Make Space. It's a guidebook um, for thinking about creating spaces that foster creativity, innovation, collaboration, play, and more. The first two-thirds or so of our reading from this book is made up of design templates, guiding principles and considerations for space design. Um, and then I've also included at the end of this reading um, our insights or best practices and models for space design. Next, we're going to look at some pretty specific workspaces designed to evoke creativity. We're going to tour um, 15 or so digital ad agencies. Then we're going to look at learning spaces specifically. First, a great Flickr album um, that a professor curated of different college learning spaces in the U.S. And then we're going to look at a really specific case study, um, a progressive secondary school in Australia that's pretty amazing in its concept and design. Then you guys are going to take a look uh, at the 40 workspaces of the famously creative. And then we're going to veer off for a moment and visit and explore an outdoor space, New York City's High Line Park. Um, where you guys are going to read a brief history of the park and see some of its transformations. I've included a bunch of photos that I took um, on a study away in 2011. It's an amazing space and a complete evolution of the particular space in which it was built. Finally, <laughs> there are two creativity sparks for this week. Um, the first, and you may be familiar with it already, is called Catalog Living. The people who run the site collect catalogs like Pottery Barn and Ikea and Crate and Barrel and more, and they've created an imaginary family who lives in the catalogs. So we'll be reading about the life of this imaginary family. I know, it sounds ridiculous, um, and it's absolutely hilarious. But I think this parody site does a really good job of forcing us to think about what space is supposed to look like um, and what sorts of lives space and designs construct. Um, and the final creativity spark for this week um, is a skit from Portlandia. Uh, it's called Bad Art, Good Walls. Um, it's also hilarious, and it really begs the question of whether or not people work hard to make places um, as hideous as they can be. These readings and materials should set you guys up well for Project 6. For Project 6, you're going to work within a creativity cluster to propose a new learning, working, creating space on MSU's campus. It needs to be bold, creativity-centered, and innovation-oriented. It has to be by students, for students. 
It's funded by a $2 million donor gift, and the donor has launched this competition um, because the donor wants to make sure that you guys design it and you create it based on your needs, your interests, your creativity, and your innovation. Um, the student proposal that is the most compelling, creative, and innovative will win the design competition, and the space will be um, built in an addition to the MSU Union. Specifics about what your entry must include are posted to the Week 6 folder on Angel. The deliverable of Project 6 is a standalone presentation, meaning that I'm going to go through it on my own. You guys aren't going to actually formally present or deliver it to me. Um, preferably a PowerPoint, but if your cluster chooses and you're comfortable, um, you can use Prezi or Vuvox or another tool that you think is appropriate for the competition and for your entry. You might have noticed in Google Drive um, that you can create a presentation using Google Apps, so feel free to work collaboratively in that space if that worked well for you and your group. Um, otherwise, your group should explore what methods work best for you as you get started on your presentation. Before you do all that, though, carefully review the full Project 6 prompt and the requirements for your entry to the competition. It's in the Week 6 Angel folder along with all the readings and sparks and cases for this week. Happy designing, happy creating.